fine good afternoon to you all students hi students how are you i hope you all are well and you all are doing well so by god's grace you all are safe i think it so so students have you all studied till chapter 6 so so i have completed till chapter 6 so have you all studied till chapter 6 have you studied or not so last class i have marked question answers for chapter 6 so what assignment or car what homework i asked you to do i asked you to write important programs isn't it so please study and write it okay so each and every chapter is very very easy only if you are listening and studying means very very easy only so not like a previous year 11th standard so what are you are studying in 11th standard so compared to that 11th standard this year is syllabus is easy only okay so please listen the class daily so please please listen it and study well okay so welcome to our today's online class so all of you take your computer textbooks in your hand so please all of you take your computer textbooks in your hand so take your mobile phones and listen carefully okay so today we are going to study about chapter 7 okay so so what's the chapter 7 means python functions okay so already you have studied thoroughly about functions so first chapter second two mark question is a define function isn't it so chapter 6 you have studied about control structures isn't it so in chapter 6 what are the things you have studied statements if condition is for loop while loop nested loop isn't it so lot of things you have studied so each and every chapter is related to one another okay so please don't skip any one of the chapter so if you skip any one of the chapter means you won't get continuation to study okay so you will feel tough to study so please don't skip any chapters okay so this chapter you are going to study about functions of python okay so what do you mean by functions okay so functions are nothing but it is a blocks of code okay what do you mean by blocks of code that means collection of some lines or sequence of statements or bunch of some statements that only we are calling as an what blocks of code okay so why we are defining functions in the program okay so each and every functions in the program will do some jobs or some functions okay some work so each and every function you are defining in the program no so each function has separate jobs okay so for example first i'll say some examples then only you will get understand easily okay so last year you have studied structure isn't it so in structure so you might have familiar with one example are you remembering struct student of are you remembering that example so each and every lessons i'll say the same example isn't it so please that remember that example okay so each and every chapter i am telling the same example okay so in that example what first step you will do struct student of so inside the struct student of what are the things what are the details struct student of that's one of the function okay so inside the structure you are going to write inside the student of in the age in the height in the weight float weight so okay so inside this structure you will define another one struct dob of are you remembering that one what are the things you will define inside dob date of birth in the date in the year in the month okay so please remember that example then only you will easily get you will get understand okay so what's the use of that function so why we are using that uh, function why we are using that structure student of function so you are going to write for example in your program you are going to display all the student details of your class for example your class 47 students are there so you are going to display 
the details of 47 students. For that, you are going to write the function. Okay, for that only structure. So, inside that, what are the details you will write? Your name, that is the end name. Then your height, end height. Then your weight, float, weight. For data birth, inside the structure you are writing, extract DOB of, inside that what you will write? Int, month, int, year, int, date. Okay, so, why you are writing that functions? Okay, why you are writing? So, to display what is the aim of that function or what is the job of that function? To display all the student details. Okay, so, what's uh, what I said you need to display the details of your class 47 student details so without writing functions what you will do 47 times you need to write the details student role number one name height weight then role number two height weight then data but likewise 47 times you need to write whether it is a easiest job or tedious process it is a tedious work isn't it so in order to avoid that one, you are writing the function only one time. But 47 student details need to display. For that, instead of writing 47 times, you simply you need to call the name of the function. Okay. For example, what's the name of the function? Student of. So 47 times, you no need to write all the details. Simply, you need to call the student of function. Okay, simply if you call student of function means it will first time it will print first student detail then second to student. Okay, understand? Understand what do you mean by function and what's the use of function? Yes, if you understand that example means this one is very easy to study. Now you read this one. What's the first line, first point they have given? It is a some blocks of code. So in that example, what is the, what do you mean by blocks of code in that example? In the height, in the weight, then uh, in the DOB, then uh, sorry, in the month, in the date. That and all, some collection of lines, isn't it? So that only we are calling as a blocks of code. So that code, so what's the use of that code to do? Some job. Okay. So to perform the particular, second point, read the second point. To perform particular thing. So, instead of you are writing the code multiple times, you need to call the name of the function. Okay. So, that's the second point they are giving. So, no need to write again and again. You need to call the name of the function. Okay. So, third point what they have given. So, no need to write the same lines of code again and again. So, that only I said. So, no need to for example... For example, you need to display the details of your class student, 47 student means, no need to write 47 times. Just you need to call the function name. Okay. So, if you call the function name, what are the codes you have written inside the function will run automatically. Okay. So, so if you compare to other things, the functions makes the program very, very easier to write, read as well as test. For example, uh, same example I am telling, 47 times you are writing the same thing. Data birth, height, weight. So, in some places if you will find some errors. Okay, while you are running the program, you will find some errors. It is very tough to find errors in that 47 times. Isn't it or not? Yes. So, that only, likewise if you write in function means easily you can identify the errors. Understand? This is the introduction about functions. So, what's the main advantage of function? This is an important question, okay? Main advantage of function. Okay. So, two main advantages they are given. So, what's the first advantage means? Avoids repetition. What do you mean by repetition? Again and again. The same thing only. Meaning is same. So, again and again, no need to write the code. Same example, 47 times, no need to write your code student details only one time you can write and call the function name okay so that's a, it avoids repetition understand what's the first point then high degree of code reusing so the same example to display the student details of your class means 47 times you can reuse the code is yes, indeed so 47 student details you need to display no 
so how many times it will reuse the code 47 times so that's the meaning of high degree of code reusing so you can made it made this as a second point also first point it avoids repetition the second point it makes high degree of code reusing okay then third point is it pro better modularity what do you mean by modules already you have studied about modules what do you mean by modules splitting of the program into small portions we are calling as an what modules for example the same program so same example only so why i am telling the same example means then only you can easily get understand okay the same example 47 times you are writing the program so you need to divide 47 times isn't it so to avoid that one you can divide only one module okay that you mean by module the dividing of a big program into a small small modules understand so this function will provide better modularity for your application understand so understand what's the meaning of modularity okay so what's the main advantage of function three advantages you have studied very very important question so what are the three advantages first it avoids repetition then second point avoid high degree of reuse code reusing that point modularity okay so next thing is the types of function understand so now we are going to study about how many types of functions are there okay so you are studying about which language python language isn't it so in python there are four types of functions are there okay so how many types of functions are there in python four First type is a user defined function. This is a very very important question. Okay. What do you mean by function? What is the main advantage of function? And the types of function. Very very important question. So listen carefully and study. Now itself you study. Okay. So while I am teaching itself. Please listen carefully. Immediately after completion of this session. If you study means it is very very easy to study. Okay, and also you can be able to easily score center marks or above 90 marks. Surely you can take understand so listen carefully so how many types of functions are there totally four what's the four types of function first one is user defined function okay what's the first type of function user defined function second thing is built-in function okay third one is lambda function fourth thing is recursion function Okay, so this chapter you all study detailed about these four functions. Understand? So what's the four type of function? First thing is user defined function. Second one is built in function. Third one is lambda function. Fourth one is recursion function. Okay, so now we are going to study about what's the definition of each functions. Understand? What do you mean by user defined function? So, this and all, sometimes they will not like this, explain the functions in detail, okay, or explain the functions. So, what do you mean by user defined function? First function is what's the first function? User defined function, okay. So, user defined function means name itself having, user defined, okay. So, the particular function is defined by the user, okay. So, what do you mean by user defined function? User defined function means that function is defined by the user, user themselves. That means according to the user needs, the particular user is defining some function. That is called which function? User defined function. Understand? So, in that same example, first itself I am telling one example, no? Structure student of. So, that structure student of is defined by who? So, if you are writing the program, what I, what's the program I said? To display the student details of your class. So, who is the user? If you are writing the program, means you are the user. So, you are defining that functions. So, that function is the struct student of. That function is defined by who? The user or you or myself. So, that function is defined by the user. That one we are calling as an which function? User defined function. Understand? Next one is built-in function. So, built-in function is the functions that are inbuilt within Python. That means, while you are installing the software itself, the particular functions are built-in. Okay? So, no need to define the functions by you. 
already some functions will be there while you are installing software itself that functions will be there that we are calling as sandwich function built-in function okay so what's the best example means for example input of then print of then main of what's the meaning of input of function so you will give all the input values in the input of function what's the use of print of function it will print what are things you are typing inside the print of function it will display the result main of function what's the use of main of function inside the program the main part of the program you will write in the main of function void display of what's the meaning of void display of that function will display the detail so whether the each and every functions have set in meaning isn't it whether you are defining that function no already the functions will be there input of function means input of function will be there inside that function you are defining some statements okay so that kind of functions we are calling as sandwich function built-in functions understand that means already it is there available in python understand third function is a lambda function okay so what do you mean by lambda function means the fun some functions have no names so when functions have no names or the functions with are available or functions you are defining without the name we are calling a sandwich function lambda function understand what do you mean by lambda function functions you are defining without any name so the functions are they defined without any name means that functions we are calling a sandwich function lambda function understand next thing is a recursion function so recursion function means some functions will call itself that means the function itself call again and again that type of function we are calling a sandwich function recursion function this already you have studied in 11th also recursion for example program to check the given number is even or odd okay so even means the program itself call even numbers means the even function will run odd numbers means odd function will run that is the four or five times are the function itself call that is called what recursion function understand so four types of functions you have studied what are they user defined function built in function lambda function and recursion function user defined function means defined by the user built in function means already built in that means predefined function lambda function means the functions without any name we are calling as an lambda function recursion means the function will call again and again that means itself the function itself call that is called recursion function understand so next thing is defining function how you are going to define a function what do you mean by defining so you have studied about functions so now you are going to define or write a functions in the code so for that certain rules will be there how you need to write the function okay so so for defining function so what's the use of function actually so what's the use of function each and every function have separate work or separate functions so for example struct student of means it will display the details of student of okay otherwise the same example another one inside the function for display of means it will display some details print of means it will print some detail so each and every functions must be define why you are defining the function you are using the for your purpose certain functions for example display the details of student means you are using student dot likewise based on the particular functions you are using certain function names okay so already i said so while you are installing the software itself lot of built in functions are there so one example they have given print of function what's the use of print of function you can print any details by writing statements inside the print of function okay and also you can able to write by your own functions also understand so this is the defining function then that's a normal thing when you are defining own function means what are the rules you should follow okay so you are defining this is the rules to be followed for defining function in python 
okay in python language if you are defining your own function means so what are the rules you need to be follow this is very very important question okay so listen carefully then only you can able to understand the programs also so if you are not listening carefully this means you can't able to understand the program so please listen carefully okay so what's the first thing means so if you are defining some function means the function blocks always starts with the keyword def okay <clears throat> so if you find the keyword def in any program means you should know that's the function understand so if you are if you find out the keyword def at the starting of the program means you should know what's that one that's a function okay so function block always starts with the keyword what def that's the first point okay then the keyword def is followed by the function name so after that i'll give one example then only you can able to understand easily so now just i am telling or teaching about what are things you need to follow listen so first the keyword def then after the keyword def you should give the function name okay what's the first thing you should define the function with the keyword def then after the keyword def you should give the name of the function okay so after the name of the function you should give this parenthesis okay so three things you have studied in the first point what's the first point the function always starts with the keyword def the def is followed the keyword def is followed with the function name and the function name is followed by what parenthesis so what's the first point function always starts with the keyword def then function name then parenthesis symbol okay understand then what are the inputs you are giving inside the function so that what's the input of, of uh, what's the input we are giving for example a equal to 5 b equal to 10 that only we are calling as an parameters or arguments isn't it so a equal to 5 b equal to 10 c equal to 10 like that so based on your need for example height weight the height you are denoted as a letter h weight you are denoted as a letter w likewise so what are the things you are defining as a input that is parameters or arguments okay all the input parameters or arguments you need to be placed in where inside this parenthesis understand so for example first thing you you know what's the first thing you need to define the keyword def then you need to give one function name for example i am telling def student of what's the function name student then parenthesis this one inside this parenthesis i am giving int height what's the parameter height is the parameter understand understand then third point means so always after this parenthesis you should give this colon and what's the third point first keyword def then function name then parenthesis if you are giving any input parameters or arguments for example a equal to 5 b equal to 10 if that is optional if according to your need you can give if you are giving any parameters or argument means that you should give inside this parenthesis then after this parenthesis you should give colon symbol okay then and this indented that's very very important indented means space so that's a main thing in python okay so mostly you will get errors in spaces only compared to c++ program so python it's very difficult to find the errors because space arrangement is very very important so if you leave any one space means also you will get errors that's a space is very very important that only they are giving indented indented means spaces understand next thing is so first you need to give define function function with the keyword def then function name then parenthesis so if you give input parameters means inside parenthesis if you are giving input parameters after you will give colon then indented indented means after the colon you should write the statements in the next line that is indented understand so after writing statements if you are giving a return means what's the meaning of return means so it will 
exits the function. That means that function will enter with the statement exit. Understand what's the meaning of exit? So if you are giving a return inside the function means in that place the function will get exit or in that place the function will get closed. Okay. So return also you can able to give expression or statements return A, return B. Okay. So if you are not giving any statements, any parameters, simply if you are giving a return means so you the particular statement will get the out, give the output as a none. Okay. So that's important one more question. So return with no argument means what output you will get? None. Understand? So why I am taking slowly and I am explaining again and again means this and all very very important things. Okay. So what are the things you need to note while you are defining function? So what's the first point say? What's the first point? Keyword starts with the keyword def then followed by the function name then parenthesis. If you are giving any inputs inside the parenthesis means so you can give inside this parenthesis symbol after this parenthesis colon will be there then you should leave space and uh, that means next line you should write the program so next thing is if you are giving some return statement inside the code means in that place itself the code will get exit okay so in return also you can able to give arguments or parameters if you are not giving any arguments or parameters means what's the meaning the output you will get as a none understand Next thing is, see now you know to write your own function. So next thing is syntax for how you are going to write your user defined function. This is a syntax. Listen, whatever things I have explained in theory that they have given in syntax. Listen, what's the first step? The function starts with keyword def. So this is a, so have you seen def? So the function name starts with the keyword def. Then after that what you should write function name. Def then function name. Then inside the parenthesis you should write parameter. That's optional. If you need means you can write otherwise leave it. According to your wish you can write parameters. One or two or three parameters you can write. So inside after that parenthesis you should see colon will be there. Colon will be there. Yes colon. Okay. So after this colon. So you should write the some statements inside the function. Okay. After that what you will give return. See inside itself they have given. Inside the return if you are giving any arguments or parameters means it will return the result. Otherwise simply if you give the return statements what output you will get? None. Understand? Understand the syntax? The function name, parameter, then colon. So this colon also important. If you leave this colon means also. So half mark will get reduced. Okay. Yes. So next thing is you are going to study about block. What do you mean by block? Okay. So block means nothing but it is a some codes or lines or more number of lines of code. So one line for example if you are giving only one line in a program we are calling as a one line. Same thing. So if you are uh, defining for example here if you are defining how many things how many lines will be there block of statements is there is indeed so inside the block of statements one line you can define two line three line or four or five lines so if you are defining four or five lines that we are calling as an block okay that means more than one lines so that lines we are grouped together as a we are calling as an statements understand so which one we are calling as an statements So which one we are calling as statements. So one example I said no struct to student of. So in struct to student of. So in the height weight is struct to dob. All these things together we are calling as blocks of code. Okay. So simply if we are giving struct to student of in the age alone. That we are calling as an only one line. But in the age height weight. So more number of lines if we are calling as an what blocks of code. But only one line is there means we can't able to call it is a blocks of code. Okay, so this group number of lines to give the particular meaning of the function. Okay, that's a big sequence of statements. Okay, so these statements you are going to execute. Okay, 
so that's the first point you see so block is a one or more lines of code grouped together so that we can treat that as a one big sequence of statements for what execution that you are executing so in python already said no so each statements are written with indention what do you mean by indention space that is it that, that so space is very very important in python so each and every statements you have defined with a proper spaces okay usually inside the function if you are writing means so usually the blocks for example listen so this is the function definition isn't it after the next line you are writing some statements that's a blocks of code isn't it so after you are if you are writing starting to write some blocks of code always the line is started with how much spaces four spaces okay so here after this function definition you are writing four lines for example i am telling so you are writing four lines here so all these four lines will be at the same same position with four spaces that is indented understand understand what do you mean by block block means a sequence of statements so you can able to write inside the function to perform particular task what's the second uh, for the second point each and every block of statement is indented that means proper space you need to give so the block always starts with the code width how many spaces four spaces if uh, according to your wish you can write four or five or six lines but each line will be at a proper spaces that means proper indented four spaces understand so next thing is nested block okay so nested already you have studied about nested what do you mean by nested nested means one inside another isn't it so here nested block nested function means one function define inside another one function so nested block means one block will define inside another one block that is called nested block okay so <coughs> nested block means more than one block will be there so for example they are telling so two blocks if you are defining one block is defined inside another one block so that inner block we are calling as a nested block so if the first block you are starting with four spaces means for example they are telling in this program the first block if you are starting the starting the lines of codes with one space one tab space means the second block the statement will starts with two tab spaces understand so what do you mean by nested block so one block you are defining inside another one block so if the statements what are the statements you are giving inside the first block is defined with one tab space means the second block will starts with with how many tab spaces two tab spaces understand the difference between a block and nested block so here they are giving one symbol normally defining function you are studying a symbol one example they are giving so here this is a function name simply they have given do something of normal one function name so inside that they have given value equal to 1 okay that means assigning state for example a equal to 5 or b equal to 10 or any one value you can give then return value of what's the meaning of return value of it will return the statements so whatever things you are giving it will return for example i am telling do something of this is a function name then value equal to 1 so what's the output return value return value what's the output you will get 1 understand this is a normally a simple example they have given okay simple thing you need to understand no? for that they have given one simple yeah. next thing one example listen it so already you have studied the functions always starts with the keyword def functions always starts with the keyword def then def the function keyword def followed by what function name so what's the function name here what's the function name hello of then after the function name what you need to give parenthesis so after the parenthesis which is symbol colon understand now functions now you can able to identify what's the function so what's the keyword def is a keyword then this is a format after the function name hello then parenthesis then colon what's the function name here what's the function name hello of understand so listen so this is the block of code after the function you have studied so no don't write the next line as it is from here how many spaces you need to leave 
four spaces. Okay, so automatically if you are typing the program in Python means automatically if you write the function correctly means if you press enter button means automatically the line will be displayed here only. But if you are writing the line from here means your program will get error. Understand that is space indented, indented. Indention is very very important in Python. Listen, inside this you are giving print hello of Python. Inside print statement you are giving hello of Python. What's the this thing? Return. What's the use of return? So if you find return statement inside the program means the program automatically exit here and again go to the function. Isn't it or not? Yes, this is the one simple example for function. So what output you will get for that function? What output you will get? Hello Python. Understand? Yes. Next thing is advantages of user defined function. Okay. What's the advantages of user defined? This is the very very important question. Advantages of user defined function. Okay. So first advantage is you can easily divide the program into modules. So using this function already whatever things you have studied. You know, same only they have given again and again. Okay. So you can able to by use, defining the user defined functions. For example, you are at the same example you take 47 student details. You need to display means no need to write 47 times. You can write the function one time and display the details. Okay. So that is modules. You can easily divide the program into modules. Okay. Likewise, you are dividing the programs into modules means you can easier to manage. Same only. So 47 times if you are writing the same details in the program means think how many lines it will come. So if any whether that is easier to manage the no, more than 250 lines of program is there whether it is easier to manage. No. So line quiz if you split the right, uh, modules means it is very easier to manage. And also it implements code reuse. What do you mean by code reuse? Already you have studied reusability. More number of times you can reuse for example 47 student detail mean 47 times you can if you are writing the function the same function you can use 47 times okay so that's the next point they have given no need to execute the same statements again and again instead of that you can call the function name okay and also you can able to change the name of the function and where functions inside also you can able to edit it based on our your wish so same program if you are dividing into lot of modules means different programmers can work easily. For example, they want one big project they have given. So that project they are divided into five modules. So first module can work with first programmer. Second module is work with second programmer. Likewise each and every programmer. So likewise each and every programmer can define their own functions. Understand? So what are the things you have studied in advantages? First thing is modules. You can easily divide the program into modules. Second thing is easy to manage. Then third point is code reuse. Easily you can reuse. Each time no need to write the same code again and again. So fourth point is you can based on your wish you can able to change the functionality of the particular functions and different programmers can work with that different functions. Okay. So next one is calling function. Okay. Last we have studied how you are going to define the function with one example. Now you are going to study about calling function. Okay. So inside this here the same example only they have given. You are going to call. What's the function name here? What's the function name? Hello. So you are going to call the function hello of. Okay. So if you call this function what output you will get? What's the keyword? So this what's the function? Function starts with the keyword def. So this is wrong. Actually the print will come here. Okay. So def keyword then function hello of then parenthesis colon. So the printer sorry this printer statement will be displayed here. Okay. Don't write as if this is wrong. Okay. So print off will be four spaces. Links four spaces I need to write here. So inside this you are giving print hello python. After that return statement. What output you will get? Hello python. Okay. So return statement, if your program is fine, return means automatically the program quit and go to the function again. So the same example, listen, same example you are giving another one function, same thing, see def hello of 
print hello python return after that they are giving print hello of function okay listen what output you will get none why so inside the return whether you are defining any arguments or parameters no so without defining any arguments or parameters again you are giving one line first itself you have studied in return statement if you are not defining any arguments and parameters means what output you will get none but without defining any parameters and arguments you are defining another one line but whether you will get output for that one no what's the first output you will get hello python so after the return statement there is no arguments or parameters so but our, what you are defining again you are giving one line but you won't get any output so because return has no statement so what output you will get none understand so next thing is passing parameters in functions okay so already you have studied parameters what do you mean by parameters parameters means the things you are giving us an input for example a equal to b sorry a equal to 5 b equal to 10 that and all we are calling as an parameters okay so what do you mean by parameters means parameters other name is arguments so parameters or arguments are giving inputs to the function or you now you are going to pass the parameters to the functions okay so listen so what's the thing always the function starts with keyword def then function name after the function name what you will give parenthesis so inside this parenthesis you can define parameters or arguments for example inside this parameters you are defining more than one arguments means for example a equal to 5 b equal to 10 c equal to 15 so three parameters you are giving so what's the condition means each parameters will be separated by commas understand for example a equal to 5 comma b equal to 10 c comma c equal to 15 that's the condition parameters need to be separated by commas okay so what are the thing parameters you are giving inside this function so this while the function you are executing that parameters will the will call this function itself okay so what are the parameters you are giving inside the function while the function while you are executing the function this function will call this parameters automatically okay so based on that parameters you can able to give inputs understand so listen for that they have given an example here in this program there are two parameters w equal to 3 what's the this one the lines in a program line starts with hash symbol means we are calling as an command line isn't it so this one no need to study so what's a this is a function why the function starts with keyword def then what's a function name area so inside this this is parameters how many parameters are there here two what are they w and h so they have given the value w is 3 and h is 5 okay so after that what's our parent the rule after parenthesis you need to give colon then return w into h so here after return they have given some inputs so this program you will get proper output but last program after the return you are not giving any inputs but uh, but you are giving print statement at the last so only you will get the output as none but here you are returning some statements or some in what are they w and h so you will get output so what's the formula w into h sorry listen see after the function definition see next line always starts with four spaces leave four spaces and you need to write w into h so you now you have given formula but what's the next step you need to pass the parameters where you need to pass area you are simply got defined area w and h so where you need to pass in this place you need to pass the values so print area of 3 comma h what's the value of w 3 what's the value of h 5 so what's the output you will get area of 15 so while you are running the program this function automatically will take the value w as 3 and h is 3 oh, sorry h as 5 automatically you will get the output as 15 it will return the output as 15 understand understand so what are the things you have studied today function definition how you are going to define the function then syntax then example program return statement okay so uh, so today's up to this portion enough tomorrow we can continue 
next class okay thank you so what are the portions i have taught all these portions please study carefully thank you students thank you